Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Somalia. Back at it again. <laughs> no, but, um, so this lesson, we're supposed to go over repentance, but I felt led to share um, a testimony of, of faith. We've been talking about faith in our first lesson. We talked about faith and um, the Word of God. And so I just felt led to share a test share my testimony of faith um and just to share like what <laughs> what I've been dealing with or what I've been going through and learning as I taught about faith um and so yeah so uh, next week, we will definitely be starting on lesson two, um, talking about repentance, what that looks like, what that means, and all of that. So, let's get into it. Let's get into this testimony. So, the last two weeks, I believe, we have been talking about faith and the Word of God, and, um... As I was teaching those Bible studies, I have also been applying it myself and really like not, I, w I wouldn't say going through it, but I've been learning for sure what I've been, you know, preaching or teaching. And so one of the faith moments was my car um, it was one Thursday or Friday where my car was doing this little thug dizzle. It was shaking, rattling and all that stuff while I was on my way home from work. Um, uh, I was on the highway and it was, it was doing some crazy stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, like what is happening? What is this? And so I pulled over onto the shoulder and I'm like, what's happening? And so I was on the phone with one of my friends and she was like, what's going on? And I'm like, girl, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I was like, my, my stabilizer track light is on and my car is shaking. And then my engine light had came on. And so I'm like, I just want to go home and so usually when I get in those type of situations I just I mute myself I stop talking and I don't want to talk to anybody I get an attitude and uh, I try to figure out a solution to the problem and so before I could even get to that I feel like God wouldn't allow me to turn my phone off cutting my phone off from my friend um because had that happened I would have cried I would have freaked out I would have had like an anxiety attack because like what is this and then I'm like my mom's not here so like she couldn't help me even if she wanted to she lives in Georgia so she's like miles away so like she can't help me and so I'm like so my friend, she went on Google, she figured out like what the stabilizer track meant and she found out that it was okay for me to drive. And so I turned my car on and I'm like calling on the name of Jesus. And then it started shaking again and I turned it off. And then she was like, um, I, don't, I don't remember what she said, but I turned my car back on again and I just started calling on Jesus. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> Lord. Jesus, God, um, I want to go home. And so I just like, I like seriously just started calling on his name and I um, pulled off of the shoulder and I started driving and I'm just like calling on his name and eventually I got home. And so in that moment, instead of choosing, <laughs> instead of choosing death, instead of choosing to allow fear to take over my mind and my actions instead of allowing um, anxiety to come in and like uproot everything that I've been teaching 
and 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 applying and all that stuff instead of doing that I chose life I chose to believe in God I chose to trust in the Lord I chose to call on God and believe that I will get home and believe that everything that he said he was going to do that he's going to do it regardless of whatever would happen and so I got home and I got home safely my the next day my my stabilizer track had went off and my engine light had went off and so I'm just like oh Lord was that a test did I pass did I pass the test um but in that moment I just I I, I just wanted I had to choose faith because at this point, I can't be teaching about faith to y'all and not doing it for myself, applying it for myself. Like, that's not, in order to please God, I have to have faith and I have to walk in it and I have to apply it. I have to do what I'm teaching, like period. But also, I'm to the point where I just, I don't want I don't want fear and worry to be my God. I don't want that to, I don't want to idolize that. Like, that's not, that's not it. So, no, that's not an option anymore. Like, it's just not an option. So, yeah. And so, another testimony, and then we'll get into scripture. Another testimony is recently, um, so I started a job part-time. But I applied for full time uh, at the same company, at the same job. And so my money is a little short right now. And so rent was coming up. It's the first of the month. And I didn't have all of the money that I needed for rent. Or I had the money, but I couldn't use that because you can't pay rent with a credit card. Like that's just, it's not an option. And so I'm just like, okay, well, I get paid on that Friday of the first uh, week of this month, August. And so I'm like, um, I, one, I don't know what to do. Two, every, every option that I'm coming up with isn't, isn't it. Like, it's not going to work. That's not how it's. It's not giving what it's supposed to give. So that's not an option. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't do any of the options that I had in my mind. And so I'm just like, okay, well, the other only option is to trust in God and know that whatever happens, it's going to happen. You know, like last week I talked about how um, I talked about having faith no matter what the situation was and I foreshadowed my whole entire life because I talked about rent and I talked about if you can't if you don't have the money for rent like you have to have faith that God is going to provide no matter what no matter if you know you had to come up with half of rent and then you pay the half later or something else no matter where you had to have faith you had to believe that God was going to provide for you no matter what and believe and hope that whatever it is it will come to pass and so I foreshadowed my own life like I literally had rent due um, the first of the month I didn't have the money at the time um, and all of my options were not valid they were not they were not an option and so I had to believe that God was going to provide. I had to believe that God was going to show up at the perfect timing in all of those situations. And so Friday came and I had my money. I had my rent money. And I saw that my rent had went up. And I believe it went up because I was late. And so, which, I mean, that's, that's a given. 
So I went back to my bank account and I'm like, okay, well, like, I'm $100 short. Like, I'm $100 short. Like, what am I going to do? And so I went to my savings and and then I, um, I transferred money over. And so, so I paid rent. Thank God I had the money that I needed to pay rent. It was late, but rent is paid. I can live here another month. And and then I didn't have money left over to like to like live in a sense, kind of, but not really. Sorry, that's my alarm. And so I'm like, okay, another test. <laughs> another test. And so I paid my rent. I paid all of my my bills that needed to be paid and now I'm no, I have no money um, I have like my business money but I don't want to use that for for my you know outside of my business and so the next day or the same day um, I had text my mama and I told her that I wouldn't be able to buy her tuna or something that she wanted and so she was like that's okay and then she was like well do you need um twenty dollars and i was like i mean that'd be cool but like i can't pay you back like right now and she was like it's not it's not a loan i was like oh my god like wait wait and so i went over there and i got the money from her um, she's amazing. I thank God for her. And, and then the next day or later that evening, it was like, it was like midnight and I saw that my mom had sent me some money and I'm like, I'm like, what is happening? What is happening? And I only questioned it because it's more it's more of the amount that she would just give me. Like, she would give me, like, like um, money for, like, a burger or something, like, on a Friday. Just to treat yourself or whatever. Get ice cream. But it was more. It was more than ice cream money. Like, so I'm like, what is happening? What is this? And so I text her and I was like, um, did you, did you mean did you mean to do this? And she's like, yeah, like I just, no. I'm like, okay, you talked to mama, didn't you? Um, but I just, I just counted it all joy. Like, um, what I'm saying is I eventually received money to pay my rent and then I didn't have money afterwards to like, nibble off of um I didn't have nibble money and God sent two people to to willingly give me some some money it just just because and what like God is a provider like he supplies all of your needs it's it's you having to do the work to receive you have to practice what you teach at the end of the day if you're saying that you are a woman or a man of god and a woman or a man of faith like you have to live that you have to live that through thick and thin you have to do what you're teaching and then it's just like when when you do you start to see god in everything like god is so loving he's so amazing he is such a provider like through the storms through the waters like he is the don he is that guy he's that man every day like he doesn't change up he, he never changes up he's faithful but yeah so those are my testimonies of faith and what i have been living through and experiencing and, and, and learning like it 
it it get hard. It get real hard. But the 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 teachings, the learning, the 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 seeing of what you're you're believing and hoping in for, like it's the end results. And also it's it's the it's the thick of it. Like you 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 learn from those experiences. You you reap what you sow. Like it all it's like y'all, it's a thing. But um to end it all, I wanted to go over these two scriptures that I came across. Um, Philippians 4. No, Philippians. Yeah, Philippians 4, um, verse 4 through 7. And I'll read it to y'all. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, rejoice in the Lord, knowing that whatever comes, it will come. No matter what situation that you are in. Believe that God will get you through it. Believe that God is the man who will supply all of your needs. He is the man who, who has all of the nutrients, all the supplications that you need in order to get over this hurdle, to get over this hump, to get and learn from these situations. Like, Because we're not doing it for nothing. It's all for something, um, and it's not just for you. It's for the people that God's going to allow you to to teach or to have under you. You know, being disciples, we are to have disciples. Um, so it's it's not for nothing. This life is not for nothing. Um, like. You'll never, you'll never go hungry when you are feeding off of God and just living life with him. He'll supply all of your needs. He'll give you everything that you need and then some, like, and then some. Like, I ain't have no money. I have no money. But then God filled that with what I needed to get by. Who does that? Who does that? Who does that? Like, like, who does that? And then you'll know, y'all. You, okay, second scripture. Jeremiah 17. Yeah, Jeremiah 17 and seven through eight. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord whose trust is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought for it does not cease to bear fruit. Wow. So blessed is the man who trusts in God like when you trust in God, you will receive everything that God is. You will receive you will receive everything that he said that he will give or that he is like when you are standing grounded, rooted on the word of God. Everything that the word of God is, you become. It's like the tree that, that bears fruit. Whatever fruit that that tree is bearing, you too are going to have that. If it's bearing apples and oranges and lemons, like when you are about that tree life, when you are about that God life, like the godly life, like Everything that he is, you become because you're feeding off of the tree of life that he is. 
when you are standing grounded with God, everything <laughs> that God is, I'm just reiterating everything that I'm just saying. Like you, you become that. God is righteous. He's holy. He is full of life. When we are standing next to him, when we are walking with him daily on a consistent basis, like we become what he is. Like we become, it's like Adam and Eve before they, they ate from that tree. Like their eyes were closed from, from, from evil because they were so focused on God. They were so, um, they were listening to God and all that God was feeding into them, they became and they were that. But it was when they separated themselves from God and everything that God was, that separation became a thing in their walk with God. And it separated them from God and everything that he was like that. That is when like you're walking away from everything that is God. So when that separation comes, you separate yourself from everything that he is. You separate yourself from the tree of life. You separate yourself from the the fruit that's bearing from the tree like everything God is, we become as long as we're walking in our faith, as long as we're walking in the life that God is calling us to walk in. Um, so in those, in those testimony moments, had I chose death instead of life, everything that I've worked towards, I would have lost it all in that in that in that one second of a moment I would have lost everything that I have been teaching about I would have been walking in fear just in the in the quick of that moment had I chose death instead of life I would have lost everything that I have been working so hard to become to to walk in like it's in those moments where it's like you either choose death or you choose life. You either choose fear or you choose faith. It's in that moment where you have to choose. You have to choose what's going to come next. And I just thank God for, for those moments. For me, um, I have come from a background of worriness and anxiety and and fear and so in those moments when I chose to keep it pushing to pray instead of worry in those moments I am so thankful for the mindset that I have chosen the mindset that I have worked so hard to 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 have um, I'm getting off, but I'm just, I'm just thankful for God, for what he's doing in my life, what he's doing in y'all's life. Like there's so much growth that's happening. Sometimes it can be overwhelming, but I'm just so thankful for it all. And I just wanted to share, I felt led to share those moments with y'all and really show y'all how it how it really works instead of just teaching it i wanted to show you and to um to allow god to to minister um through me to you and i'm just thankful for it all i'm thankful for you all i'm just thankful for this this moment in time where we can have those moments of choosing and and then if we are able to see the promise, I'm glad for those moments too. And I'm glad for the moments that I don't get to see them because somebody else will get to see it. And, and yeah. So 
Next week, we will start lesson two on repentance. Um, I'll see you guys next Monday. And I pray that y'all have a great and blessed week. Love y'all. Bye.